Next movie is Stitches, and much like Manborg, this will definitely be in my top ten of the year. This was a movie that I first heard about from Bloody Disgusting. Bloody Disgusting, I usually don't really pay attention too much to the reviews because I, sometimes I think they're too hard. Some of the films they love, I don't love. I think their Bloody Disgusting selects line of um, movies has been extremely mixed. The only two that I honestly can, I can say I can really like, that I really liked was Chop and The Woman. I really liked those two a lot. I thought VHS was a huge disappointment. I liked it when I kind of liked it more when I first saw it, but then when I bought it on DVD, it was a pretty annoying anthology film. And I love anthology films, but I thought VHS was kind of shitty. Um, sequel looks really good, though. I'm hoping for that one. But um, they recommended this, and their logo was on the back. They didn't release the movie on DVD, but they are basically saying this one's going to be a future cult classic. And I agree this is going to become a cult classic in some way. Because this is downright one of the best slasher movies I've seen in years. Now, I've seen a lot of slasher movies in the past few years. And there has been some pretty good ones. I'd like the Hatchet movies a lot. The Lay the Rest movies are good. But I think this movie completely crushes those movies. This movie is insanely gory. The kills in this are some of the best I've seen in the longest time. Mostly practical, too. There are some CGI elements, but they work. They're not distracting at all. And the plot of this one is basically a party clown is killed at a part of a children's party whenever the kids tie his shoes and he falls back on a knife that's in the dishwasher. And years later when the main kid is 18 years old, they're having a big birthday bash for him. And, well, Stitches, the clown, comes back from the dead to get revenge on the kids that put him in the ground in the first place. And all the kids pretty much are douchebags. Well, not all of them. The main few kids are actually pretty cool kids, but there's two kids in particular that could become big douchebags. And they always like to fuck with the main kid and all that. And Stitches gets them pretty well. But like I said, the kills in this are insane. There's not much nudity. There's one little bit of nudity. Um, there's some sex, some drugs, some rock and roll. And that's one thing about the rock and roll. They, at one point, they play, um, I was dying in your arms, or I just died in your arms tonight. My cutting crew that actually plays in the movie. And when I heard that, I was like, "Oh my god, they're actually playing music that I grew up listening to in a slasher movie." You know, back in the '80s, you expect to hear that song, not in a movie these days, because all the music these days is shit, and you expect to hear shit music in these kind of movies. The music in this, that song, how it's played in the movie is so perfect. It's played during one of the kills, and it's just it's perfect. This movie is from Ireland. Which I I don't know if I've really seen that many um Irish movies Irish horror movies in general, but um that's Connor McManon, and then I hope I'm saying his name right. He is um I want to see more from him. I heard he did a zombie movie before this called um Dead Meat. I'm gonna have to rent that because if if it's anything like this one, I'm gonna fucking love it because this movie is just. I've heard some people I recommend it to a friend who wasn't that big on it and it disappointed me, but one of my um closest friends for the past um, 13 years but I took this to his house and we watched it and he fucking loved it as well and it is the kind of Freddy Kruegerish kind of slasher movie where the killer makes a kind of one liner after he kills somebody but the movie's about a clown that's one thing this movie is not serious it is a slasher comedy but the movie is about a clown so it's gonna be funny and Ross Noble who plays Stitches is fucking hilarious he's one of the best slasher villains to come out in the wild that feels kind of original. He does have that Freddy Krueger personality, but it doesn't feel like Victor Crowley from Hatchet, who's basically Jason without the hockey mask. And I do, I'm do. i not dissing this, um, Hatchet. I, I love Hatchet, and I really liked Hatchet too. Looking forward to Hatchet 3. But I think this is the one. This is this reminds me when I watched this movie, When it reminded me when I first watched Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, when I was like, holy shit. Now, that's fucking mad I've been waiting to see for the longest time. So, this basically did remind me of Tucker and Dale vs. Evil in the sense that it's much like that. This is going to be a cult classic. I can see people really digging this and give it a chance. And not putting out in Walmart is a big mistake. Dark Sky Films have released several films in Walmart. I got Hatchet 2 at Walmart. And I think they should really could put this and Manborg. And I think people are scared of clowns, so I think if they had that, their people would be like, oh my god, that looks fucking creepy. And the movie's not scary, though. So people are going in and thinking it's going to be scary. They're just going to be disappointed because it's not scary. It's fun. 
it's really a lot of fun. Like I said, there are some really fucking incredible death scenes in this movie. They are original death scenes, too. And they're bloody as hell. Um, the movie has R ratings, but I, they probably got away with it because it's really over the top. And it kind of makes me sad that this stuff doesn't get wide releases in theaters. But at the same time, I'm not that pissed about it because I can't stand going to the movie theaters anymore. Everything has to be 3D, and the ticket prices have gone way over the top. It, in order to get popcorn or movie ticket these days, you just have to you might as well just give me your entire paycheck. And that's why I don't go to the movies anymore. I was a teenager; I went all the time, and I would love to see this stuff in theaters. You know, Man Manborg. I would love to see in theaters, but a lot of people are not going to get it. This one, I can see a lot of people like it. Manborg is the kind of movie that if I were to show it to um, any Joe Schmo, they'll be like, oh, that looks cheap and cheesy. Not realizing that that's intentional. It's not because they didn't have the money. It's just that's what they were going for. Stitches, though, I can see a lot of people enjoying. A lot. And I think if you love slasher movies, if you really consider yourself a slasher fan, a true slasher fan... Uh, you're going to have to pick this up um, or order. I'm picking up order online. I don't think you can buy it. I think Best Buy might have it. It's on Blu-ray. Stitches is. Manborg is not on Blu-ray. And for a good reason, it's because it's not the kind of movie that should be shown in high def because it's supposed to look cheap. Stitches on the heart and I probably look good at Blu-ray, but I just don't give a shit about Blu-ray. Uh, I highly recommend buying this in Manborg. You can get Manborg pretty cheap online. This one costs more to get this one than Manborg, and they're from the same company. I don't know if it's because Manborg's a shorter movie, or I don't know. Even though Manborg has a lot more special features than this. This has commentary, making of bloopers. Manborg has two commentaries, multiple making ofs, a visual effects show thing. Uh, it's just really packed. Way more packed than the Troma Father's Day thing, but that has more to do with the kind of like a feud or disagreement between um, Troma and Astron 6. But yeah, pick up or order both of these. Um, make it a double feature. You won't regret it. Now, if you unless you're not into like the beef flicks, then you'll just think they're both shit. But I recommend picking them or picking both up and having a double feature with some beer. If you don't like beer, whiskey, Mountain Dew, popcorn, chips, you know, just make it a party because they're both good party flicks. Um, other than that, I'll be doing this. A show, uh, thing soon. I'm going to be reviewing some bootlegs. I think I talked about this on the show that I deleted. I'm getting some bootlegs in the mail, not illegal bootlegs, legal bootlegs of um, stuff that has never been released on DVD or is out of print, like Fair Game, Australian exploitation movie, um, Surf Two, Psycho Cop Returns Uncut. The cut version is the only one that you can get, and it sucks. A couple other movies, about ten of them total. And I'm going to be doing a show about not just. I'm not going to just review, be ruining the mu movies. I'm going to be review, um, talking about Stumpy Disc and how I... The, the bootleg company is called Stumpy Discs. And I'm going to be going, you know, discussing how they shipped it. The shipping was a little slow, but, you know... They're movies that have never been released before, so I just can't be picky. I'm going to talk about what the discs are, look like and what the movies are like. And if you should um, order from them, and their prices are pretty cheap. And I don't, I'll talk about more detail when I get it. But uh, until then, um, I'll see you later.